Oh, yeah, Kanye is spazzing out on Twitter regarding record labels. This has been a fairly interesting state of affairs, isn't it? So I guess, what would you say? Uh, when was this? Du, 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 du. I guess it all started with this tweet about Vivendi. Yeah, Vivendi, Vivendi, the holding company of Universal Music Group. Um, I think their headquarters are in France or something. You hear them mentioned a couple of times here and there. It might have been through Kanye, actually. And I guess he woke up one day and suddenly thought, you know what? I'm not actually getting the, I'm not getting the splits that I deserve for the music that I put out there. And I, I actually don't have the tweet here at the moment. I think I don't have it at the moment. I'll delete it. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, yeah, that's actually here. So I guess it all started off with this tweet here, where he basically outs Vivindi, which is this one on screen. And it's basically set the whole thing in motion. And now we have this um, constant barrage from him online where he's essentially um, calling out record labels, saying that artists need better splits. And this might come in, this might be a consequence of, you know, artists not being able to tour and not being able to sell merch in a way they did prior. And those being the main sources of revenue um, for some of these artists, especially when you consider how crappy some of these digital streaming platforms pay some of their artists right the splits aren't that aren't the best um it was inevitable that some of the bigger artists who probably feel as if that they should be in a position where they can be you know eating pretty well off some of their best work um when you're suddenly seeing those royalty checks come in and they're not really equaling some of the streaming numbers you're getting online it's going to make you ask some questions and it's interesting because i think there's been an acceptance it feels like i don't know why it is but i guess music industry is one of the last place where it has been it's kind of been in unaffected i guess by yeah it's remained it's kind of remained stuck in time when it comes to reacting or being disrupted by tech and no one seems to have been able to penetrate the music industry people have made you know uh services platforms that kind of service a need or are able to kind of allow people to get their stuff on on streaming sites or allow people to get in contact with labels or producers there, there are services out there but for the most part the mechanics of the industry are exactly the same as they were in the past right most of the power most of the control is holding the record label's hands and the artist has basically just agreed to whatever terms they get from the record label because they're so desperate to get their music out there to make the next step in their career that they're willing to sacrifice their long-term uh, splits, their long-term rights, their long-term ownership for the immediate gain of having a good, you know, a, a sizable chunk of money given to you as an advance or to have the benefit of somebody always looking after your entire creative process. Because, you know, not all artists are great business people, not all great business people are great artists, you know, the common argument. But now we're in a stage it feels like in, in music where a lot of the kids coming up now are a lot more business savvy by nature, not even just by something they've probably learned just from the state of the market at the moment, right? The moment you decide to be a rapper, the moment you decide to be a DJ, wherever it may be, you immediately have to turn into your own publicist, your own marketeer, your own brand manager, your own videographer. You just have to immediately start getting to grips with these things and you have a, a little bit more of a fund a little bit more of a fundamental understanding of what goes into each thing. So when suddenly you decide to get signed, you know, a song that you make blows up and you get signed to a label, it's going to be very difficult for a kid that blew up on SoundCloud on his own, making beats on his crappy laptop to be okay with giving away 80% of the rights of his music or his catalog or to sign a 360 deal where the label takes a chunk of everything that you do um, under the moniker of you being an artist or you sign a ridiculous you know 10 album deal that spans across you know that rolls on year and year without you even noticing after you cleared a certain amount of sales it's very difficult to get those kids to do that and again with all these other big artists like Russ and some of a few other people who have come out speaking about independence Waka Flugger and these good examples it's just it's not as easy as it was in the past to hoodwink people don't get me wrong people are still getting hoodwinked but for the most part it's very difficult to do so as there was prior so it would take somebody like a Kanye to kind of speak up about the issue to for there to be some change and it's good to see that happening I think it was it's in it's kind of uh it was greatly needed and I think oddly enough because of covid and because the earning potential of artists is completely flatlined for the most part I guess unless you're 
I don't know. And it's just some of the bigger ones. And even them, they're still not getting favorable splits. It's probably advantageous for you to rally behind Kanye in this um, really messy situation because that's the only way you're going to get any kind of um, solution in terms of what you're going through. But the interesting part of it also is that um, it also raises some interesting questions around Kanye's own business etiquette, right? And his, the way he's kind of approached his business. And maybe it's a consequence of just, you know, hurt people hurt people but in general if you're familiar with how Kanye does things he's not probably in the best position to basically call out people about signing people in janky deals or not paying certain people um especially if you're if you're familiar with how he records music the fact that he you know um hires or yeah he basically hires a whole bunch of people to come in and work with him to um put together an album to craft together a sound to use as a soundboard wherever you may be right and i guess some things maybe get lost in interpretation things get you know messages don't get crossed here or there but there's been a number of stories about Kanye West not doing business the right way himself with the people that he's dealt with so for him to be in a position now where he's having to call out these labels is very interesting because I'm sure a lot of these artists that haven't been paid from Kanye are looking at him thinking hold on you do some janky business yourself my friend um but again you know I guess the the bigger fight is what Kanye is basically getting at, right? Attacking these big record labels and making them um, do business in a more fair and ethical way. But it's interesting to see somebody like a hit boy, for instance, come out and say the following. The academics, he says, hit boy says the following, he says, I haven't been a fan of Kanye on a personal or human level since he told me face to face he stopped picking my beats because I worked with Beyonce. This is after I produced Niggas in Paris, Click, and a myriad of other songs, such projects for him and his label, Good Music, in the two years I was signed to him. In madness, right? And again, this just goes to prove how difficult it is to be Kanye's friend and it's also get behind him in general, right? Because he does say some amazing things and he comes out and you know makes that Harriet Tubman question, says slavery isn't a choice, rages on about Bill Cosby and R. Kelly. And this is another instance, right, where he's got a, he's got a point. Record labels need to, the record industry needs to change. Artists are enslaved by labels, right? Um, the splits are not fair, blah, 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 blah. But come on, you can't be stopping Hit Boy's career. And this is Hit Boy, what, in 2000, what, how long ago was that? That might have been 2015 or 30. I don't know what that was, right? That was a few years ago. That was Hit Boy um, grafting in the industry. That was Hit Boy when you were still trying to rap, right? He was still figuring out what his role was in the industry, in the scene, still getting to grips with how to maneuver in the industry, finding his voice as an artist, finding his sound as a producer, right? He's still trying to figure stuff out too. So to, for, for someone like Kanye in his position to purposely block him because he felt like he went behind his back to work with Beyonce because I guess at that time Kanye and Jay-Z were going through something is ridiculous, petty, and so... um uh just bad practice in general to the nth degree it just doesn't make any sense in it um but hey i guess hip boys moved on from it and of course he's become what he's become now at the moment so i'm sure he's not stressing but still it does go to prove you know kanye can be a great dude to kind of rally behind with these causes but in terms of dealing with him on a personal level he does seem to be a bit of a cunt in it <laughs> it continues here. it says um this tweet is something I can agree with though. He says, Universal Music Group has held me in what the last three lawyers have hired have referred to as the worst publishing contract they've ever seen. He says, since I was 19 years old, I'm 33 now and I have multiple Grammys, produced a lot of your favorite artists, biggest songs on top of, tour, of turning in over 450 records since I signed and Universal Music Group still doesn't have it in them to simply be fair. Um, they're doing this to me with all that I've accomplished through hard work and I can only imagine what the kids don't have a big plate of proper guidance if I have to be the one to get blackboard for telling the truth um, and trying to get the next generation free then so be it by the way I produced 10 plus joints on the current number one album in the country Detroit 2 he says he tags the Universal Music Group and says the company who's helping me in the management side, Rock Nation, let's fix this. Slave deals are still very real, rampant in 2020. Again, absolute madness. I, get, I think it's good to blast this out in public and get this out there, Kanye, in that respect. But just the effect, you know, the fact that he's the one that's doing it is funny considering the amount of janky deals he signed people to. Here's another example. 
where some guy called Adam Killer said he Kanye tried to sign him to a 35k publishing included. I agreed with that. What so no, you tried to sign me to a 35k with my publishing included. I agreed with what you were saying, but how many artists are you enslaving to, right? Another one, but the comment here underneath is hilarious, right? Because I don't know if that's true. Says, I'm listening to your music now and you should have gratefully, you should have been grateful for the deal he offered you and taking it. Your music just isn't as good as if I'm being honest. Bloody hell, right? And then another person here says the following again, says I have four friends this man's refused to pay. One of them last year while he was trapped in the Chicago studio asked if I wanted him to pass my name along and I cackled and said, yeah, don't pay niggas. <laughs> a year later, he still hasn't seen a dime. That is mad, isn't it? Another one. He says, um, I haven't liked an album since Jesus. Another album where he refused to pay a friend despite being producing the hit shit, the hit. Um tell me what is the point if we're aligning with this self-hating and dangerous person it's just it's difficult isn't it uh, safe hurting and uh, uh, it, again I, I think unfortunately if you want change you're gonna have to get behind Kanye right he's that much of a force he's that much of an influence he's got that much cultural relevance he moves the needle in that much of a way that unfortunately if you really want to get good splits Kanye is your man you have to go behind him but there obviously is this understanding that he's not the best person to get in business with probably the reason you know uh there's a myriad of reasons maybe the overabundance of too many cooks in the kitchen and all this sort of stuff and costs going sky high because there's always been that question in it around like how does he actually pay a lot maybe some of his stuff's coming out of his own pocket but especially when he used to do some of these bigger activations prior to Yeezus prior to, prior to Yeezy being what it is now right Madison Square Garden all this sort of big you know uh bombastic stuff like who's actually paying for this right who's writing this off like who decides that's a good idea to market an album right to how will these random models stand and pose on this amazing you know uh, performance art piece in the middle of my square, like, square garden like who thinks that's a good idea what record label would kind of sign off on that and then you see him not paying certain people you know for their work on albums and you're thinking to yourself like who who's signing that or who's signing those deals off who's cutting those checks because it definitely isn't the person that's meant to be paying people and it continues here it says mind you this kid was in a phd program and bouncing around mills or bouncing around motel sorry yes team knew this and took full advantage of this because they knew he'd never publicly called them out which is happens quite often more often than not if you know which is funny because the moment you kick up a fuss the moment you sort of like threaten to go public or you do go public is a moment these brands or these big conglomerates these big entities decide to suddenly invoice you or pay the invoice or cut the check it's really annoying that the sense happen um continuity it says many of your fave black artists and creative don't actually pay black people or give them the respectable rate but will yell from the mountaintops about why they should be paid fairly but that's another conversation for a later date lol which is some accurate point and then somebody here says this very accurate point here about Hudson Mohawk you remember he went through a very public um feud with Drake and Kanye I think at the time and then kind of recounted I think once he got paid so there is a there is a bit, a bit of a common theme with Kanye being a bit of a janky business person business uh person in his own right but again like I said I think unfortunately if you do want some change if you do want the industry record industry to, to um become more fair you are going to have to band around kanye he's going to have to be your guy unfortunately uh, but again let me know what you think of the what are your thoughts in the comments down below do you think kanye is a bad businessman do you think he's just doing business the right way are people overreacting will the record industry actually notice their faults and um spec out some better terms for artists or will they just say f you pay me and keep it moving let me know in the comments down below